Welcome to all of you looking at blending technology, teaching strategies, and emerging trends to create some engaging educational experiences. Now, today we're going to be talking about a question I got in one of the classes I teach regarding Storyline. And I'm really excited about it because I love playing in Storyline. It's just a fun tool to get in there and play with. So in this class, there was a project where a student had created a map and they wanted to make the map a little bit more interactive. They wanted something where you kind of clicked on an area of the map and it would pop up some information and then you could close it back and go back to the original map. So we played around with it and it didn't work originally, but now I think we've got it figured out. So we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do that in Storyline 3. But instead of doing a map, I'm much more into board games. I kind of like them, it's one of my things. So what we're gonna do is a project that I've been wanting to look at for a while where we're gonna take an instruction manual and we're gonna make a portion of that interactive. So what we wanna do is we wanna take this page right here and we're gonna end up trying to make that into an interactive element where people can click on it and get the information they need. So let's go ahead and dive into Storyline and see if we can't make that bad boy happen. All right, so before we get started, let me go ahead and put out two things. One, I've already got most of the images from the board game clipped out. This is a project that I have done a long time ago. I made a video about the board game and kind of overview of it. And I'll put the link down there because it was a pretty sweet video if you want to go and watch it and kind of see what that looks like. But regardless, it was one of my first projects. So I took those pieces into Photoshop, clipped them out after I'd scanned them, and they may not be the crispest, nicest looking images in there. So for speed's sake though, I'm gonna use them because I've already got the files on the computer and it'll get done what we need to get done. The second thing I want to point out is that this is not going to be a graphic design video. So I'm going to use some rudimentary elements that are in Storyline. Um, it's not going to look the prettiest, so you don't have to throw comments about it down there. But we'll make it look at least professional. And then in the end, um, what I want to make sure we get is that functionality of the interactive map or the interactive overlay. So I'm not going to worry about the graphic design side. You don't have to hit that up. We're going to focus on can we get the interactions in there. So with those two caveats being done, let's go ahead and take a look at our base layer in Storyline. Now I've gone ahead and created this and it contains the board game, the hero card, and some of the game tokens are over here on the side. The page we are mimicking has card images on the board, but we're gonna put those in as pop-ups. For the pop-ups, instead I've put red circles on the areas that they can click on along with instructions at the bottom to tell them how to interact with our board here. Now I've gone ahead and converted the circles into buttons. Lastly, I went ahead and put a next button on it just in case we wanna move forward and skip this part of the instruction manual. But for now, it's not gonna go anywhere. It literally is just a button with no trigger, no link to it. But that way we get that look and feel of what an actual lesson might look like or what the instruction manual might look like in the end. All right, so let's go ahead and with our basic look ready to go, we're gonna go and create our first information pop-up. We'll start with the location area designated by the red button in the upper left hand corner. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. We'll name it the location layer so that we know which one we're working with. When on the new layer, we'll create three areas. One with an image showing on an area that we're working with, and this is gonna to need to be a larger box since it contains images. Then we'll make a second box over here that's a bit smaller and we'll have our text in there, our general instructions. Now lastly, we'll create a close button where we can click it and eventually it closes out all of this pop-up and it goes back to the interactive board. Now let's go ahead and create our titles in the two boxes, the larger one being the title of whatever our pop-up layer is, so location cards in this case, and then the other one we're just going to go ahead and call instructions. Once we've got those in there, we'll insert our game board again and we're going to crop it down so that it just focuses on the areas that we're talking about. Then. We'll copy and paste that image so we have a second copy of the game board because I think that's gonna create a cool effect. So let's put an arrow from the first board to the second board showing them what it looks like before we set it up and what it's gonna look like after we set it up. Then we'll add an image of the actual location card and where it goes on the board. This gives the player a good indication of what it looks like when it's ready to go. Now in the instructions area, We'll type up some general setup instructions since that's the portion of the instructions book that we're working on. In this case, I'll be honest, I'm going to copy and paste some pre-written text that I already have just to save us some time. Lastly, let's go ahead and put a red circle around the upper right hand corner of the card 
because we really want to draw their attention to that so that they're using the correct cards for the game that they're selecting to play. Now we're going to add a border around our two main images just to make it look a little bit sharper. We're going to do the first one manually and then once we have that set we'll go ahead and do the other one using the format painter. And there we go. The layer is looking pretty good but now how do we get them back and forth from that main board we had to this information layer we just created? That's where triggers are going to come in. So let's go back to the base layer and click on our location button in the upper left hand corner. We're going to go ahead and add a trigger for it. When we click on the new trigger, the trigger wizard will pop up. We want to change the drop down to show layer and select location layer which we just built under the layer drop down. Lastly, we don't want this to happen when the timeline starts, but rather when the user clicks the button. And under the object, since we had already selected the button when we created the trigger, it's automatically populated the correct button in there for us and we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and click OK and there it is. Okay, so this will make our information layer pop up, but how do we get back from the information layer to the actual interactive board? So let's jump over to our location layer and click the close button. Once we have it selected, we're going to add a trigger on this layer as well. When the wizard pops up, we want to select hide layer and then we want to select this layer because we're trying to hide this information layer when they hit close. Again, we want it to be when the user clicks the button and since we had the close button selected when we created the new trigger, it automatically populated in the cell for us. Alright, so that should close it, so let's go ahead and preview the file. So before we actually preview the file, let's go and do one more thing to play it safe and make sure that everything is showing up like what we want. We need to go back to our base layer and make sure that these information layers aren't accidentally popping up at the beginning because we only want them to pop up once the user clicks on them. Now an easy way to make sure that this happens is to add one more trigger. We'll hit new trigger and in the wizard we're going to say hide layer. Let's go ahead and select the location layer because we don't want that showing up at the beginning. And to make sure it doesn't show up at the beginning, we're going to do, instead of clicking on it, we're just going to leave it as when the timeline starts. This means that as soon as the base layer is starting, it should hide that location layer so the player doesn't see it. Alright, so let's go ahead and do the preview. And here, you can now see that we are clicking on the button and it makes it pop up. And when we click the close button, it brings us back. But we do have one problem though. If we click on it again and look at the location layer, you can see that the buttons, such as the red buttons and the next button, are still showing up on the base layer. That's no good because it can lead to an accidental click and that can mess up the user navigating around this page. No good indeed. So how do we fix that? Alright, well, if we exit out of the preview, we can go back to the base layer and we need to remember that the base layer shows up on every layer. So if we don't want the buttons showing up on the information layers, then we can't have them on the base layer because the base layer shows up on every layer. So the solution, let's go ahead and create a layer and just put the buttons on the layer. That way we can hide it when we need to and we can show it when we want to. So we'll simply right click on the base layer and let's click duplicate layer. Then we'll go ahead and rename it and we'll call it button layer. Lastly, let's go to the button layer and we're going to take off everything except for the red buttons and the next button. We're going to leave those on the button layer. Let's go ahead and finish cleaning it up by going to the base layer and now we're going to take off all the red buttons from the base layer and we take off the next button on the base layer. And there we go. With our buttons layer now there, we need to clean up a bit more on the triggers again. We're going to go back to the base layer and add a new trigger that shows the button layer at the start of the timeline because we want to make sure the buttons show up at the very beginning. We hit new layer then we switch the first area to show layer. We're going to show the button layer and we want it showing right at the beginning so we're going to select when the timeline starts. Then we go to our button layer and we still see where it's going to show the location layer. But we want to make sure that the buttons are gone too. So let's make sure that the location button is selected again and now we're going to add a second trigger to that button. After clicking the new trigger button we're going to select hide a layer then we're going to select this layer, which is the button layer, and then select when the user clicks. And our location button is already populated because we had it selected when we created the new layer. Now let's hit OK, and we can see in our trigger pane that hopefully when we click this button, it will make the button layer and all of the buttons on it hide while it makes the information appear. 
We quickly need to go into the location layer and clean that too. Clicking on the location layer, we will go to the close button and add another trigger as well. We already have the location layer disappearing so all of the information will go away, but that will only leave the base layer. We need to bring the buttons back too. So let's go ahead and create the new trigger. We're going to select show layer and then select the buttons layer and we want it when the user clicks and we already see the close button is populated because again that's what was selected when we created the new trigger. So let's go in and see if that works. There. You can now see that we're jumping back and forth between the main board and the location area. And when we're on the location area, you can't see any of the buttons except for the close button. Perfect. That's what we want. All right, let's do a second one really quick. Let's go ahead and do the bottom left corner one, which is the active enemies button. Since we already have a lot of this format set, let's just go ahead and right click on the location layer and select duplicate. Then we can rename it to the active enemies layer. When we click on it and look at it, our triggers there have already copied over. So we just need to change the look and feel of this information layer. Now this is one of the really cool things about using duplicate is it's a huge time saver, especially if you have different layers that are going to end up kind of looking the same and having the same function. It carries over those triggers so we don't have to go in and rebuild all of them individually. It saves a ton of time. So I'd really suggest getting used to using the duplicate feature and playing around with it because it's going to make your life a lot easier as we go. So getting back to the layer, you can see I've already gone ahead in and changed the text and the images so this layer is ready to roll. Now we just need to go in and update the triggers on our base layer and our buttons layer. So I'll go ahead and hop over to our buttons layer. Now like we did on the last one, we need to add a show and a hide trigger to the active enemies button. I'm going to go ahead and click on the button and hit new trigger. And then when the wizard pops up, we'll select show layer from the drop down menu and select active enemies layer in the next area. Then we want to do it when the user clicks and we already have the active enemies button in the spot. So we'll hit OK. Next, we need to go and select the button again. We're going to hit new trigger. This time we're going to hide a layer and the layer we are hiding is this layer, which is the buttons layer. We'll do it when the user clicks. And again, the button is already pre-populated for us. So let's hit OK. And then let's go to our base layer and fix that last trigger there too. On this layer, we just want to make sure that this active enemies layer doesn't show up at the beginning. So we're going to click new trigger and then select hide layer. The layer we want to hide is the active enemies layer and we want it to be as soon as the timeline starts because we want it hidden at the very beginning of the slide popping up. The object doesn't matter since we're referring to the timeline on this one so we'll ignore that. We're going to hit OK and we should be ready to roll. Now that that's set up, let's take a preview of it and make sure it's working. Once in preview, here you can see that we can click between the two buttons, having the layers appear, and we can close them so that the main buttons are appearing again. So basically this looks like it's working with no problem. It's what I want it to do. So basically to finish out this project, we've got about nine other areas we need to build in there, but we're going to build them in just like we did on that active enemies layer. We're going to duplicate the layer. Then we're going to go in and change the images, change the information text. We're going to make sure that the triggers copied over, which they should have. Then we go to our buttons layer. When they click on the button, we want to make sure that it shows the correct information layer and that it hides the button layer, those two steps. Then lastly, we're going to go down to our base layer and we're going to make sure that at the beginning of the timeline, the, any layer that we create is hidden. We don't want it to show up at the beginning. We want to make sure that a user has to click on something for those layers to show up. So again, buttons layer, we want to show the information, hide the buttons. Base layer, we want to make sure that the information is hidden at the start. You do that for each of them and it should be ready to go. So with that, I've gone ahead and made each button active. So let's see what this product ends up looking like. And there we go. Each button is active and as we click around on them, you can see that different information screens appear. When we're done, we can go ahead and hit the close button and go and explore different areas of the game board. When looking at this file in Storyline, you can see that the base layer basically just says, show me the buttons layer at the beginning and then hide every other layer that we created. That way only the game board and the buttons are showing up. Now when we look at the buttons layer, each button has two triggers on it. One to show the layer that we want to look at and one to hide the buttons layer so that it's not popping up in the back. We jump over to one of the information layers and you can see that the close button also has two triggers associated with it. 
one to hide the information layer we're looking at and one to bring the buttons layer back up invisible. So again, looking at each of the layers, we just copy that process and everything should work. We hit preview and there you go. You can see we can jump back and forth between this interactive element as much as we want. And that's basically it. You take some creative thinking, add in triggers, layers, move them around so it gets done what you want it to do. And then you can make these interactive maps or board games or elements or whatever you want that your users need. So there are probably a thousand other ways to make this type of interaction and storyline. If you guys know of some that are a little bit more efficient, feel free to throw those down in the comments because we're always trying to make these uh, high quality elements as fast as we can so we can get to the next project. But one way or the other, this one worked. Now, if you also like videos like this, where we're trying to take some technology and some teaching strategies, throw them together to make engaging educational experiences, be sure to go down and hit that subscribe button as well, because we're always trying to put out new videos to help you guys make the experiences just that much better. But in the meantime, go out there, test around, play around with it, and we look forward to seeing what you guys create. Have a good one, guys.